Hey everyone, I just wanted to do a quick review of a new piece of pro audio gear I received. It's a Behringer Europort MPA40BT self-powered speaker. Now you may be saying, well who cares, it's just another powered speaker, lots of companies make those. And you'd be right. Except this model does something that most others don't, and that is it has an internal battery rated for 12 hours of use. None of the big name manufacturers, JBL, Electrovoice, QSC, and so on, offer battery powered speakers. And with the exception of Anchor Audio, everything on the market so far has been cheap junk, the likes of which you'd find on eBay and shipping directly from somewhere in China. This model from Behringer is the first time I'm aware of a major manufacturer stepping up to the plate and trying to grab a piece of the market. Battery powered PA speakers are great to have at your disposal because some locations either don't have mains power available or it's too much of a hassle to tap into. This unit has an 8 inch woofer, 1 inch tweeter, and packs 40 watts of amplifier power which we'll talk about a little later. The back panel is simple and straightforward and offers a couple of surprises for a speaker at this price point. It has two mic or line inputs through XLR combo jacks so you can use balanced or unbalanced connections. One thing to note though is that it doesn't offer phantom power, so any condenser mic you plan to use will need to have its own power source, like an internal battery. The speaker also has a stereo RCA line input, which, since this is a single speaker, obviously gets mixed down to mono. But notice the small blue button there. It's what puts the BT in the MPA40BT's model name. That's the Bluetooth sync button, so you can wirelessly stream music from a mobile device. What's also interesting is the USB socket to the right. That's for connecting one of Behringer's optional and proprietary digital wireless microphone systems, and it's unfortunately not usable for anything but that. Also unfortunately, using that wireless system takes over the two mic channels, so you can't use wired and wireless mics at the same time. There's a four segment display of LEDs to indicate battery life, along with a standard IEC main socket rated for 100 to 240 volts AC, so it'll work pretty much anywhere in the world. Next to that are the bass and treble controls, which I do have some problems with and we'll come back to in a little bit. And finally, the master volume control. Notice that there's a connector missing, and that's any sort of line output. This model seems to be designed for use as a single speaker only, so if you want to use a pair of these, you'll have to figure out how to get a signal to each of them independently. I think this is a major omission on Behringer's part, especially since it would have been pretty inexpensive to add on. Since most use cases for this speaker will involve just a single mic, setup couldn't be easier. Just press the power button, plug in a mic, set its channel gain, then turn up the main volume. If you don't want to use the speaker resting on the ground, and there's only a few cases I can think of where it would actually be appropriate to do so, there's a standard speaker stand socket on the bottom. One case I can think of where this thing would be on the ground would be as a monitor speaker, but there aren't any provisions for it to tilt back. Its sides are kind of rounded, and if you tip it back onto its bottom corners, it just flops back forward. You'd need to build some kind of cradle for it or jam a roll of gaff tape onto the front or something, I don't know, to, to keep it angled upwards. The pack-ins that come with the speaker are pretty minimal. There's the typical instruction manual along with a six foot modular power cord that I wish was longer. Behringer markets this unit as a PA system, so they felt obligated to throw in a handheld mic, and I wish they hadn't. This thing is incredibly cheap, the kind you'd find with like a home karaoke machine. And the best suggestion I have for you is to bin it and buy a professional mic. As I mentioned earlier, the unit is rated for 12 hours of use on a full battery charge. At about 20 pounds, the whole speaker is a pretty manageable weight, which prompted folks in some online reviews I've read to speculate that it must use a lithium ion battery. While that certainly would be nice if it was true, the average price that the speaker sells for is enough to make me think otherwise. And just under this panel lies the truth. And there you have it, a 12 volt lead acid cell rated for 5 amp hours. 
In a way, I'm glad it's not a big lithium ion cell because lead acid cells in this form factor are much easier to obtain and of course a lot cheaper for when the time comes that the factory battery needs to be replaced. While a lighter weight would be nice, 20 pounds really isn't bad at all in PA speaker terms. And if you're really a wimp, you could pay the extra few bucks for the MPA40BT Pro, which is identical to this unit, but adds a pair of wheels and a collapsible handle for rolling it around. One thing that those no-name PA speakers always have in common is poor quality electronics and speaker components. Thankfully, Behringer seems to have found a nice balance between cost and performance in this regard. While some may scoff at the unit's 40-watt amplifier, it's actually a Class D design and packs a decent punch. Going Class D allowed Behringer to reduce weight and cabinet size while maximizing efficiency to help get good battery life. The metal speaker grill is friction fit to the front bezel and just takes some careful prying to pull off. This is a two-way design, and one thing to take note of is that the high-frequency driver is a one-inch soft dome, not the typical compression driver as you might expect. This should offer smoother highs, but at the expense of overall distance. The low-frequency driver is a pretty standard eight-inch paper cone woofer with treated fabric surround. Something strange I noticed is that the surround on the speaker is sticky for some reason. It's gotten small bits of styrofoam and cardboard from the shipping box stuck to it. I have a feeling that after a few events outside, I may need to go back in here and clean any dust, sand, or dirt off the surround, and perhaps tackle why it's sticky to begin with. Maybe the biggest thing that the MPA40BT has going for it is that it's manufactured by a fairly well-known pro audio company. Behringer isn't known for making top-of-the-line equipment, but what it does produce is still pretty solid and definitely a great value. The speaker comes with a three-year warranty, which should be reason enough to consider it over its eBay rivals. While it would be pointless to give you a sound demo of it, it would only sound as good as my microphones and your speakers, I can say that I'm not dissatisfied with its performance. It offers decent punch and detail. I do wish the frequencies of the bass and treble controls were better thought out. While adjusting up the treble can help add some sparkle to music playback, increasing the bass just makes things muddy. It increases the lower mid-range when it really should be centered at right around 100 Hz to give more presence to kick drums and bass guitars. Still, I can't complain too much about this speaker, especially since it typically sells in the US for about 180 bucks and I was able to get mine as an open box unit for 160. I could see this unit being really useful for outdoor demonstrations or ceremonies, for using in a float on a parade, and in several ways it's the ultimate PA for buskers. I bought mine for simple speech reinforcement and occasionally blasting music in the garage. And for that, it has its work cut out for it. Thanks for watching.